Hello everyone, this is Dalster, and welcome to another video, and this is an episode review, and the reason why I'm doing it like this is because for some reason on Twitch, um, I got a copyright strike for, I don't know why though, I think it's because, uh, some of the video clips that were shown on this episode in the Mr. McMahon documentary for Netflix, I'm guessing maybe some of them were, were from WWE, WWF, and I know when it comes to the copyrights and stuff, it's kind of um, hard to um, do stuff because WWE they're very they're very strict when it comes to their copyrights and all that stuff. But um, uh, I'm gonna talk summarize a little bit about episode four. Um, I know it's gonna be a little random. So, I'll try to do it as fast as I can. Um, I wasn't gonna write a lot of notes, but I ended up writing a lot of notes, like I usually do. So, episode 4 begins with Vince McMahon talking about who was one of his uh, favorite wrestlers during his youth. And I actually put this down in uh, my video for um, the, chi the sad childhood of, Vin of Vince McMahon. I think that's how you call it, the sad childhood of Vince McMahon. Which is, is, it should be one of the first videos you see. When, one of them. And he said one of his favorite wrestlers, which I got right, was Jerry Graham. Jerry Graham, he was a character and he was a heel back then. And he would like light up like dollar bills and smoke, put his cigars in there. It was kind of a little like, back then I think it, it wasn't really essential to have like characters the way Vince did it later on in the years. And he said he wanted to be a wrestler, but it was because of that he wanted to be a wrestler, but his father had told him no, that, you know, being a, a promoter, you can't, also, you ha cannot, he doesn't think it was a good idea to not only be a promoter, but, well, he didn't think that being a promoter and a wrestler was a good idea at the same time. Which leads to the opening of um, episode 4, Attitude, and they talk about the Attitude Era. And I forgot to mention, but Vince McMahon, he really loved bad guys. He's, he wasn't a big good guy person, even though he had Hulk Hogan, who was a really good guy back then when he was in WWF. And, you know, John Cena, of course, he's also considered one of Vince's favorite wrestlers, who's also a good character. Well, during his title, well, when he had the championship, and... Around this time, they go forward with um, the Montreal screw job and the uh, aftermath of the screw job and how uh, there was a lot of tension going on with it. Yet, like before, we had the the social media, of course, TikTok, Twitter, all that stuff. There was message boards. I don't know if you guys remember the message boards, and a lot of people on on the message boards, from what I saw in this episode, they were not happy. That Vince screwed Brett, and it received a lot of attention. It was like way before, you know, like back then. If something like this were to happen again, I think it would have exploded the internet, probably. And so Vince went on TV, and or he had like some kind of, like kind of like how do you say a sit down, probably from WWF, I would assume. And that's where he said his infamous line, "Brett screwed Brett." And. He got a lot of heat from it. A lot of people hated Vince for what he did to um, Bret Hart, which I I'm not going to lie. I thought that was very messed up. I mean, I could understand why he wanted Bret Hart to lose, but at the same time, it was it was sort of a lose-lose situation because Bret Hart was going to WCW, and I think Mr. Mc I mean Vince McMahon was just not... He w I think he was kind of scared because he didn't want... Bret Hart to show up in WCW with the title and then having to make fun of it or something like that. Kind of like m what Medusa did when she um, brought the WWE title or the woman's title and then she she burned it up, put it in the trash and burned it up and yeah, I think a lot of people just didn't like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And so so Vince didn't want to give up that title and he he had the the 
referee and everyone say on the day, hey, we're going to give the title to Shawn Michaels. And the problem with that is that Shawn Michaels, he was not... I love Shawn Michaels, but during the old days, in the 90s, probably before then, he was um, not a good person. He was uh, he was just a party animal, did what he wanted, and just... Yeah, he wasn't listening to the rules. And Brett didn't want to give it up to Shawn because of his attitude, but eventually they gave it to Shawn, and Bret Hart was really mad, and... What happened? He ended up going to WCW, and WCW, World Championship Wrestling, it was considered WWF's biggest competition at the time in the 90s. And for 83 weeks, WWE, I mean, WWE, WWE, WCW um, beat out um, WWF for pretty much 83 weeks. And it was kind of a big deal because it was stressing out Vince, and it, it kind of... I think Vince wanted to paint like this um, happy, go friendly, like, oh, good guys always prosper type of thing during the 90s. But it just, like a lot of things, you know, stuff like that goes out of style. And, you know, whatever is in, you you pretty much have to take it or or else, I mean, you can't. It's sort of like, like stores, for example. Like if you keep, for example, the stores, Sears, Macy's, and JCPenney, um... They are, they they used to be on top, but because they were not following the same method as um, Target and Walmart, they a lot of them have went out of business. I don't know if that makes it any easier. So the so then Vince came up with the Attitude Era, and how it started was that Shawn Michaels came into the ring with bicycle shorts, and Vince wasn't there supposedly. That's what Bruce said. Bruce Pritchard, Vince is the man, and Shawn Michaels ha- was had um, his his crotch area covered, which I think you guys know what I'm talking about. And he just came out there like a rebel, and people or people actually liked it. And but Vince didn't like it. He thought it was unprofessional. But eventually, he felt that maybe that this is what WWF needed at the time. They needed a little more attitude in order to beat their competition. And around this time, they started forming... Well, Vince started creating characters such as DX, which is like kind of a faction. And DX, they were like rebels. Shawn Michaels was in there too with... um, What was that guy's name? Oh, God. Um... Rick Rude, right? I think it was Rick Rude, right? Oh god, let me let me look at it real quick. China was in there, Triple H was in there, and they they did a bunch of stuff like kind of like I remember there was this one thing I saw on WWE.com. I don't know if it's still there or not, but that was a long time ago. Um Shawn Michaels and Triple H just came came out for a Christmas thing and and they just exposed their <laughs> their body parts and the WWF they were not happy about that they were like they were like um they had like the their private areas covered with like Christmas wreaths I think or the WWF logo at the time oh yeah I think it was Rick Rude yeah it was Rick Rude Rick Rude who was kind of like the body another bodyguard for DX and what happened during that time. So DX was starting to get popular and then around this time, um, later in the days, um, Vince McMahon, he recruits um, Stone Cold Steve Austin who actually was in ECW before, which I didn't know that. Or maybe I did, I just didn't really, maybe I might have forgotten. And so around this time, uh, Vince McMahon tries to create um, Stone Cold into some kind of character. And Stone Cold Steve Austin, of course, becomes like this redneck guy from Texas, sort of like rebellious kind of guy, which we all know as of today, you know, really roughy guy and very kind of like, oh, I don't care about you. Go screw yourself type of guy. And this, when he did the infamous speech of 316, which is kind of based on the a Bible verse, well, um, that's when the character started 
becoming a little bit more popular. And around this time, Eric Bischoff didn't really seem to care. He was just like, eh. Because WCW at the time, they were winning against WWF. And so, but eventually, you know, um, around WrestleMania season, they had Mike Tyson in. And sadly, around this time, Mike Tyson, I don't know if you guys are familiar, he was a boxer. Um, he, he was in jail or something happened around that time. I remember watching a video about it a couple months ago when he R-worded a, a woman. He had allegations of R that he R-worded a woman, which rhymes with great, by the, by the way, in case you, you guys are like, what's R-word? Yeah, um, and even though, th had Mike Tyson, had they do something like that today with Mike Tyson, I think that would have definitely gotten WWF canceled, because <laughs> why would you hire a uh, R-worded person in WWF who might have R-worded a woman, which a lot of people probably, probably might know more about this than I do. But yeah, it's because at the time, WWF, they were in desperate need for ratings, and WCW, they were really just beating the crap out of them, and I think it really set, like, the tone that Vince had to change his ways, and it didn't seem like he wanted to at first, but of course he had to. Um, so, the reason why Mike Tyson was was appearing in for WrestleMania is to fight Stone Cold Steve Austin and Stone Cold Steve Austin he ended up winning the title and around this time you know Mr. McMahon also started to um, create the what was he doing oh Vince McMahon he started to around this time the Mr. McMahon character started to come out and he said that the the Mr. McMahon character was based on rich people he hated as a kid that he that he finds them really intimidating and so he tried to embellish or try to copy that and make it into his own which of course it's a pretty infamous character but with a lot of controversy which is why this uh documentary was made and around this time not only did we get stone cold and dx but we also have the rock in the beginning he well actually his grandfather was Peter Mavia. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Peter Mavi, Mai, Mavia, uh, Mava? I'm really, I apologize for pronouncing it. Because I know he's like an important person in The Rock's life. And The Rock's father, Rocky Johnson, of course, they were like really popular wrestlers during their time. And when Ro The Rock came in, a lot of people didn't like him, actually. He went by Rocky Mavia based on... Um, his grandfather and a lot of people didn't really were not fond of the rock at first and so the rock ended up joining the nation of domination and you know he kind of cut a promo of well i don't care if i'm i'm a different color you know it's not about being a good guy or a bad guy i want respect and you know that's when he kind of turned heel with the nation of domination which i'm pretty sure they received a lot of a lot of hatred during that time because a lot of there were definitely a lot of heels during the WWF era I remember watching um the WWF era a little bit the Attitude Era um before the WWE Network was bought by Peacock and it was really crazy um during this time I, Stone Cold Steve Austin had a ri big rivalry storyline with um s uh Mr. McMahon and it was kind of crazy, you know, he definitely, I, there was one scene where he beat the living crap of Mr. McMahon's leg while he was in the hospital bed, and then he was in the ring beating the crap out of him. It was a pretty huge deal back then. I don't remember much of it, but from the clips, um, he, he, at the end, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin wins, and a lot of people really loved him for that. They started also buying his shirts, and, um... Just anything. And, you know, he also created the whole uh, middle finger thing, which uh, a lot of people still... He, I think he still does it to this day. And they had, like, this big cage match, and Mr. McMahon's all pointing, sticking the middle fingers in the air. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. And they also asked the people that were interviewed, mostly, like, 
a lot of people that work with fans, Trish Stratus, um, Bruce Pritchard, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Tony Atlas, uh, a lot of people, surprisingly, Cody Rhodes, um, who else was in the, in the episode? Uh, what was that guy? Oh, um, God, I can't remember his name, I just had it. Jimmy, was it Jimmy Hart? I think it's Jimmy Hart. I know he, he's a heart, but he's not, I don't think he's related to the, the, the heart family, though. The ones that we know, Owen and Brett, and who else said, but Mr. McMahon said that, he, well, Vince, Mc, Vince, he said that he and the character Mr. McMahon are not alike at all, and that they're just two different people. But all the other people that were interviewed, they were like, oh, they're a lot alike. They're, I think they're the same person. Although, I think Hulk Hogan said that. Well, I don't know. But I personally think the Mr. McMahon character and the Vince McMahon as a, as a regular guy, I think they're both the same person, especially because, you know, what happened in the years. I just think that... Um, he doesn't want to admit it because he knows that if he says, yeah, I'm a lot like Mr. McMahon and, you know, being a rich guy, he, it would probably not make him a good, yeah, that would probably not be a good thing for him and, and wouldn't present a good image for him. And, and what happened? So Mr. McMahon, well, Vince, of course, you know, Oh, and the reason why I want to talk about that is because I kind of feel like, in a way, the way Mr. McMahon and Vince McMahon are a lot, they try to pivot each other, I feel like it's a similar to method acting. Because I don't know if you guys heard of method acting, but a lot of actors, they like to do method acting. However, um, whenever they do method acting, it, a lot of people have said it's, they find it as an excuse to be jerks. For example, um, Jared Leto, and I know, probably, Jared Leto, um, I used to, I used to be a big fan of Jared Leto and his band, but throughout the years, a lot of people have said that Jared Leto is, uh, kind of a jerk behind the scenes, and that he, he does things that are just way out of line, and some people think that he just does method acting as a way to be a jerk and crazy to people, which I kind of see it with, um, Vince McMahon. And the Mr. McMahon character. I, I think maybe there's some method acting going on around there. And, um, but I don't know. What do you guys think? And then they talk, uh, Eric Bischoff talks about how, how Vince McMahon copied a lot of his, a lot of his ideas. And I'm like, no, I don't think he did. Because surprisingly, Eric Bischoff, he used to try to, I think he got interviewed for a, uh, a job position for WWF a couple years ago, but he didn't get the job, and I think I, I, I don't know if I said this in a previous episode, I think I might have, and I guess Eric wasn't happy about that, and when he finally, um, it was in the previous episode, episode 3, and when he finally, like, beat Vince McMahon, he kind of, like, became cocky and just very arrogant, very e egoistical, and... I don't know, I mean, to be honest, I think maybe DX is inspired by NWO, but, I mean, WWF had some good ideas, too. It, it's kind of like, I see this as a WWE, like a Marvel and DC, because I know Marvel and DC, they copy each other's ideas, like Ant-Man, um, Blue Beetle, um, Captain, wait, not Captain America, sorry. Yeah, because there are some characters that are a lot similar to other characters in each other. So, in a way, I kind of see, like, WWF and WCW in, in kind of the same position as Marvel and DC. And, or, sorry. So, I don't know. I think Eric's wrong about that. But I do think that DX was influenced by, I mean, I think DX, they were kind of like a parody about NWO, but a lot more funnier, uh, they're actually one of my favorite groups. Definitely brought me some childhood memories <laughs> and got me out of some dark times during the high school era. My high school era. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? 
And then, you know, WWF, as they started getting more popular, their storylines also became more crazier and chaotic. It was supposed, supposedly it was considered family friendly, even though they had superstars, well, wrestlers like Val Venus, who would show off his um, crotch. And then you had like, I can't remember if it was Bastion or, or um, what's, what was that guy's name? Bossman? Where he was facing Undertaker in a steel cage and they were hanging on, on a rope in the steel cage. Kind of like a noose. Which is kind of similar to like the old days when unfortunately black people were hanged back in the day. Which isn't, it's not a good thing though. It's a, pr it's supposed to be a pretty bad thing but I don't know. I mean, they had a lot of crazy things like. They had, um, they copied a story that Val Venus had his, uh, private part cut off and, um, you know, there were the women during that time, they were over-sexualized, like Sable and, you know, a lot of women had, like, bikinis and showed a lot of chest during that time. And it got really popular that a lot of these wrestlers started getting more attention through TV shows and movies and all that stuff. <coughs> And what happened? Okay, so I forgot to mention, but uh, Mike Tyson, the reason why he, he was able to get in WWF was because of Shane. Shane thought of the idea. And what happened? And so, yeah, that, that was kind of the start of, well, around this time, I think that was like when I started watching the Attitude Era in WWF. Bef once the Stone Cold versus Mike Tyson match ended, and unfortunately because of that, um, no way actually no, um, but soon after like though if if you look back at a lot of their storylines, there's a lot of crazy stuff like women being called you know bad word names and exposing themselves, and then there's the when DX was mocking um, Nation of Domination, which unfortunately, you know, that was kind of controversial. I mean, probably some people think it's funny, but looking at it now, it's like, well, when you look at it now, it, it was kind of racist and stereotyped. I mean, you have like X-Pac and Road Dog, I think? Road Dog, right? No, that's not Road Dog. Is it Road Dog? I can't remember. <laughs> um, DX, um, as blackface, which, of course, it's not a, it's definitely not a good thing nowadays. You can't get away with that anymore. I mean, DX, they did some funny segments, but I think them doing blackface was not a good idea. <laughs> Again, I, I started watching this, the last years of the Attitude Era when they were in WWE Network. So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, that is, okay, now I, I could see why there's so much controversy with WWE Network. There's just a lot of vulgar things in here. But I don't know. I, I didn't think it was funny. I thought when they were mocking um, Vince McMahon and um, uh, the his group of people. I can't remember what they were called. But it was Vince, uh, Nasty Pat Patterson, and uh, that other guy, Jerry Briscoe. Yeah, Jerry Briscoe. And Big Boss Man. I remember because China was intimidating him. Oh, and, and X-Pac was also intimidating. Um, what was that guy's name? Ken Shamrock, uh-huh. Yeah, it's Ken Shamrock. And around this time, they also, there was a reporter, a journalist named Phil Mushnick, who was trying to uncover everything he could about WWF and try to um, get Vince McMahon, in a way, like, canceled. Like, people, like, try to make people see, like, oh, wrestling is not good, but unfortunately for him, um, he and he, it took a lot longer. Uh, for Vince McMahon to get cancelled, or I guess, in a way, like, to get out of WWE, yeah. Because he did call, uh, Vince McMahon a, uh, a douchebag or something like that. A jerk? Yeah. And Vince McMahon, he said that the Attitude Era was PG, like, family friendly, and I'm like, what? It was not family friendly. Like, there were some things in there that were just way too crazy. Oh, especially the part where Undertaker throws mankind from a steel cage. Like, that was graphic. I, like, that was scary, too. I actually saw that match. It was... I don't know how, how Mick Foley survived that. 
And around this time, they also started doing like Sable. Sable also started becoming very popular. Um, she was also kind of a wrestler sort of thing. But a lot of people really like Sable. They think she was very beautiful. And unfortunately, you know, as the time went on, she, well, well, she became a huge, kind of a popular woman during that time. And I think she also wanted to be a wrestler, but I think Miss Vince saw her as, like, eye candy, mostly. But later on in the years, you know, Sable, she accused Mr. McMahon of SA and tried to sue WWE, WWF, now WWE. But she ended up going back to them and working with them, so... And she's married to Brock Lesnar after, uh, as of today. Well, for now, I don't know what's going on with them. Um... But, uh, as of today, like, I think they mentioned in the next episode how Sable tried to sue the WWF. And then we have Owen Hart, who, who was pretty much the only Hart family member still in WWF, as Bret Hart had to leave for WCW, and because he got screwed. And Vince McMahon, he, he, he wanted to keep a Hart, so he, he, keep a Hart family member. Not keep a Hart, like actual Hart. Um... And Brett felt that at the time that Vince was making fun of or trying to poke the bear with Brett by embarrassing his brother Owen. And you know, they had Owen do some the blue blazer gimmick, which a lot of people didn't like. And then, you know, I can't remember what else, but Oh, they made fun of Owen when DX were making fun of Nation Domination by having um Jason Sensation come out with a big nose and with like tape. I think caution tape around it. I mean, it was kind of funny, but I, I never really paid attention to that until I saw the Dark Side of the Ring uh, episode of Owen Hart and then the mantra Screwjob. And so there was one day in WWF where they had a pay-per-view called Over the Edge. If you would like to know the information, I would, I would highly recommend watching um, Dark Side of the Ring, the Owen Hart episode. Or if you want a, sh uh, a shorter video or something, or want to watch one of my videos for Dark Side of the Ring episode review of Owen Hart, you can. And Owen fell from... One of Owen's harness, the little rope metal thing, broke, and Owen unfortunately fell to his death. And it was a big deal back then, because not a lot of wrestlers in WWF have died like that. And when Owen died, it... A lot of, I'm pretty sure a lot of his co-workers and friends and family were just like, well, friends during that time of the pay-per-view were like, I can't, like, I can't work. I, 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 like, how do you work with, with some, knowing that someone probably died in the ring? And you could see from there, there's blood all over the mat. I, I, a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy regarding that. I think maybe some of his blood must have dripped was dripping while they were taking him to the um, ambulance. And even though Vince, um, uh, even though that happened, Vince still continued the show and he, he denies that the audience saw the Owen falling, which I think is false. I mean, I think the people on TV probably didn't see it, but I think the people that were actually there, like actually, actually there, I think someone must have seen it because I know I've seen YouTube videos where people were were saying that oh Owen fell from the arena and it was scary. I'm pr I think I saw I s there's a YouTube video about that, and you know they ended up sending suing the manufacturer and WWF were able to get away from it. But however, I remember in the Dark Side of the Ring they mentioned in the episode of, of Owen Hart, um, Martha said that <coughs> Martha Hart. Owen's ex, Owen's widow, sorry, not ex-wife. Owen's wife said that supposedly some of the heart members were told to, uh, some of the heart members were not, like, they were kind of going against her and giving Miss uh, Vince all the anything so that way they could, like, they, he could use it as leverage in order to beat Martha in the WWE, I mean, the, not the WWE, in the case of Owen's death. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but the manufacturer got sued, and, um, yeah, she ended up, um, settling with WWF later in the years, which I kind I wish she never did, but oh well. 
Um, let me see what else. So yeah, he never he continued with the show even though oh sorry, even though, even though Owen had died. And just imagine you're you're in the job and all of a sudden your friend dies. You're probably like, how did they die? And I remember someone mentioned it. I can't remember who it was, but someone mentioned that a lot of um, Owen's co-workers, you know, the wrestlers in the backstage, they saw Owen's body wheeling into the ambulance. I remember when I saw the Dark Side of the Ring episode, I think it was D'Lo or... No, I think it was Godfather. Godfather saw Owen's dead corpse and Owen looked blue. That's what he said. And I was like, dang, that must have been hard. Like, I've never... I never really seen a dead body. I did one time, but that was at a funeral because of my one of my friends' father passed away unexpectedly, and it just looked really cold. Like his his body just looked really lifeless and just. I mean, it looks like he was sleeping, but at the same time, knowing that he died, it just, you know, there's no life there anymore. So. Yeah, I think. Mr. McMahon continue with the show. It was not a good idea. I think it was a bad idea. He should have definitely refunded. But again, again, when it comes to money, money talks for Vince. And I remember there was a quote. I actually wrote it here on my notes. He said that perception is reality. And I'm like, what does that mean? I think he's trying to like talk about like the characters and stuff. But I think he also wanted... For people to realize that you know you have to um, separate the main character from, or I guess in I think he was talking about himself how you know Vince McMahon and Mr. McMahon are not the same person, which I personally think that's not true. I think that. Oh okay, so perception is the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through the senses. Perception is reality. Huh. I don't know. I personally think he he does embody the Mr. McMahon character. I see. A, I could definitely see it, especially with the accusations going around. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Vince and Mr. McMahon are a separate character or what? Oh, and one more thing. Um. So after Owen passed away, um, Bret Hart, he was really mad. He he thought that. Supposedly, uh, Vince McMahon wanted that Vince McMahon, he, he had Owen killed in order to get back at Vince, which a lot of people talk about that on YouTube. They're like, oh, Vince killed Owen because of what Brett did to him, Vince. I don't know about that. I hope that's not true. If it is, then obviously <laughs> Vince needs to go to jail for that. <laughs> I mean, obviously. But... I thought this episode was okay. It, w it was a little interesting. I give it like a 7 out of 10. I know a lot of people um, have been saying that this um, documentary of Mr. McMahon's, Mr. McMahon has mostly been like stuff that we already know. But I did. He I think this documentary is supposed to be for non-wrestling fans who never like probably never had the time to go deep in that rabbit hole of WWF, WWE. But it was an okay episode. I give it a 7 out of 10. The Attitude Era, even though it was a very chaotic type of thing back in the day, it was it was kind of interesting, but it definitely brought a lot of interesting characters. But there were some times where, while I was watching it on WWE Network, where I was like, dang, did they have to go way too far on this? I was surprised they didn't mention the, um, what was it? Oh, the Brawl for All, which uh, I think... Um, there was definitely a lot of issues going on with the Brawl for All. And I also did an episode on that if you want to check that out. Episode review for that. And Draws, who was a part of the Brawl for All, he, he ended up getting paralyzed. Not in the Brawl for All, but in a match against D'Lo, which was kind of sad. I mean, he passed away recently. Draws. I don't know if you guys knew that. And yeah, that was pretty much it. I mean, they missed that. And they also... They didn't talk about China that much, which, I mean, she was kind of an important thing in the 90s. Um, moving on to the 2000s, too, as well. But what do you guys think? Did you guys like this episode? or And if not, then did you, do you guys like the documentary in general? 
I thought it was an okay documentary. I give it a 7 out of 10. It's mostly a lot of information I, I've already knew. Especially looking into Vince McMahon's childhood. Um, but I do think... I do think it's nice to have confirmation about these things. Just to be aware like, oh, okay, so they're aware that the rumors or stuff going on online could be possibly true, depending. But rest in peace, Owen Hart. That was really sad that he passed away. I think they should have never continued the show. And one of the things that really bothered me was how Vince was like, oh, if I, if it was the other way around and I fell into the ring, I would have want the show to continue, continue on. But I'm like, Look, Vince, this isn't about you. This was about Owen, about another guy. I just kind of feel like he didn't really have me much emotions with, um, like, he had a, I feel like he just has a hard time expressing, really expressing himself and having sympathy with other people. Because this was about Owen, not him or his family. I mean, maybe if he had fallen from the ring, he probably would have wanted the show continued, but... This is somewhat someone's brother, someone's husband. But I don't know. I personally think that Vince really lacks empathy and sympathy for others. And, you know, it, mostly because of his upbringing, how, what he went through as a kid, you know, having to fight and dealing with a crappy stepfather and stuff. But yeah, that's, it's a pretty sad life, uh, but... Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I know there are times where I'm just like trying to breathe and stuff. It's just that I had to record it like this because uh, for some reason my Twitch stream, I guess, took it down. I, I would assume because of the copyright material. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. And I know my avatar is a little strange, I'll admit. Because it keeps moving around randomly. But I'll see you guys in the next episode. Comment, like, subscribe. For more videos and until next time um i'll see you in the next video bye guys